Hello everyone, I am back once again and today we're going to be showcasing week 6 of the pack league. Now my opponent, I kind of forgot his username honestly, but uh, he represents the Phoenix Incineroars team, so yeah. As always we're going to hope we can win this match and uh, you know, not get um, destroyed like we did last time against Esventhun, so yeah. Um, although truth be told, I think I remember this match being... I think I remember this match actually being one of the more frustrating matches though. But as for if whether we win or not, that's a whole different thing. We don't know yet. We're gonna find out basically in this match here. Now, um hmm. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I gotta say before the match. From the looks of it, no. But anyways, so apparently his name is CJ. Hmm. I'm kind of wondering, should I call him Carl's Jr.? Probably not, huh? Now we'll just call him CJ, fuck it. Okay, so, um, yeah, CJ here has an Azelf, a Garchomp, a Raikou, a Vaporeon, a Scissor, and a Typhlosion, okay. So, hmm. From the looks of it, I think that Typhlosion is surprisingly enough actually pretty terrible for me. I'll admit that when I first battled this guy, I didn't really think much of it. But looking at it right now, this thing actually could destroy the entirety of my team. In fact, if this thing has Sunny Day and Solar Beam, it destroys the Quagsire, the Azumarill, and the Slowking. And with its fire moves alone, it just takes down basically Weavile, Magnezone, and Crobat if it's the eruption that he has. And if it's Sunny Boost, like if Sunny Day boosted, then it takes me out with literally any fire move. This thing is actually a threat. Like, holy damn. Thing is even more threatening than Garchomp, honestly. And Garchomp in itself is also a threat. Like, a lot of this team is actually threatening. But anyways, so CJ here is actually going to lead with these um, Azelf. And I'm going to lead off with Crewbat. So, um, here. Obviously, there's like a lot of ways I can go about this. I can U-turn here. And hope that this thing isn't scarfed. So, because otherwise I'm going to take damage or possibly lose this. Hopefully not though. But, um, yeah. So here, I think my opponent actually takes a while to make his move here. Which, I'll admit that at first was kind of annoying. Because of the fact that, again, this is a, a match where it's only, you know, going to last 20 minutes. So obviously, any amount of time that's take like being quote-unquote wasted is something of an inconvenience and a pretty valid one at that so yeah this is kind of annoying but i'm trying to like you know like trying to understand this obviously by you know saying that maybe you know what maybe he's just taking his time to like kind of lay out everything but i think he could have just done that before the match no like if he anticipated his lead already just kind of create a strategy beforehand as opposed to kind of wasting the timer here like this is something that S Doom kind of already taught me already when I was doing the, the 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 sword and shield version of the pack league, is that just try to make the plays while the the stuff's going on and when I like the animations and all the good stuff, because otherwise then we're just gonna be getting into these situations where, um, we have to like running out of time basically when we're racing against the clock because that's effectively how these matches work. But anyways, um, so yeah, I fin he finally made a play. I don't know what it was yet because I actually outspeeded the Azov. Went for U-turn, got a lot of damage, which is good. However, here it's just going to come down to what I want to send in now. Unfortunately, I kind of made a mistake already by predicting early and anticipating him to just go for the straight up Psychic. But me over predicting kind of allowed him to over predict and kind of benefit him in a way because he ends up going for the dazzling gleam predicting me to go into weavile apparently because apparently that shit was actually like what else was that gonna hit honestly why would he go for dazzling gleam there he could have gone for literally anything but that honestly but he goes specifically for dazzling gleam and that's pretty bad for me my weavile's already weakened and um i just go for the throat chop also um in case you missed it, my Weavile also has Ice Beam. I think what happened was that I, I, while I was preparing my team, I think I, um, I misinput the um, the Ice Punch move in 
got ice beam instead so that's kind of annoying obviously in fact it was so annoying that i actually got frustrated here and um, rather than preserving this weevil i ended up just sacking it here to the scissor i know this thing was life orb but honestly i could have done stuff with this weevil honestly i could have actually um like send it in later and just attack something hard for damage the life orb would have taken me out but at least something on this team would have taken damage i could have switched out into maybe magnet zone here because um, seeing the eight, the leftovers um, tells me that it probably is going to be a bulky scissor with U-turn and bullet punch and maybe roost. So, and maybe the fog for rocks if I ever brought them or something. But obviously I don't do that. I go into Magnezone now though. So that way I can actually, you know, dish out damage. I am magnet pull as well, so this thing actually um, is slower than me. I can actually, you know, get the damage off, maybe even take it out before it actually goes crazy. However, unfortunately, it does actually outspeed me, so therefore, it's gonna obviously be able to switch out and send in a matchup that he prefers. He could go into Raikou or he can go into Garchomp if he expects the Thunderbolt. Both are good options, honestly. I think the Garchomp one is a tad risky though, because if he goes, for, if I go for Flash Cannon. His Garchomp will take damage, and I think it could very well be a two-hit KO, given the special attack set of Magnezones. He does end up going for Garchomp though, and unfortunately I do end up going for Thunderbolt, because I kind of was hoping I'd be able to outspeed the Scissor, which I do not. And as a result here, now I'm left with a very tight situation. Kind of determining of whether or not I should switch out. And I do believe I do that, and I go into Quagsire. Particularly to see how well I can take this Earthquake. Although, I'll be honest with you, I kind of already figured that this would actually be a two-hit KO on this Quagsire. But I kind of was just hoping that for some reason it would not be able to do that much to Quagsire. It's because now that I think about it, this Quagsire was actually... It's got to be one of the worst walls ever. I guess that's why they gave it um, the option to have Toxic in this game. Because it's just that bad. That it at least needs something to be able to like make it worth using and whatnot. But this wall is really, really bad. For Mons like with 120 base attack... Um, and up, it's basically not good for me, basically. It's a liability in that sense. But anyways, I switch out in the Crow Battle right here, expecting another Earthquake, which he does go for. But he now switches out, so I'm kind of wondering if this thing is actually Choice Guard. Which it might be, honestly. Who knows? But I just go for the Brave Bird regardless. And see, just to get damage on anything he sends in. He sends in the Scissor. And from the looks of it, it does nothing, but it's at least a 2 hit KO from where it's at right now. He, um, I'm just hoping I can like take the bullet punch fairly well and maybe even survive the Brave Bird damage. However, as you can see right here, I actually take the bullet punch surprisingly well. So I'm kind of wondering either this is not invested or this thing doesn't have the technician ability or both, honestly. I actually don't know what the, the damage calculations are for um, bullet punch when not invested in attack or when it's bulky or when it's lacking technician ability. I don't know. It's all kinds of things to consider. But anyways, bottom line is that we take out the scissor regardless with the Brave Bird, so... Now we just gotta see what he wants to send in now. He ends up sending this Typhlosion, which as I mentioned earlier, is kind of a threat honestly. And depending on the, on the moves that he may have, he could just destroy me right here and now. If he has Sunny Day and sets it up right now, then obviously that would be bad for me. But I guess because I actually um, went for the Brave Bird earlier, I don't think he'd want to do that. Ultimately, I end up staying in and just going for the Brave Bird, thinking if he has Sunny Day, he probably wouldn't, he probably wouldn't want to go for it. But he did send it in, so hmm, maybe I should have expected this thing to be Scarfed, which it is, and does go for the Eruption, does take out my Crobat, could have sent out Slow King to take it, and then go for Skull, Trick Room, or anything. And based on what I go for with Slow King, just switch out if I feel like I'm going to take a lot of damage on the next Mon. And if Trick Room is up and the Mon is naturally faster than me, I can start attacking. And I think Azumarill could have done that pretty well. But I didn't really think of that at the time, so... Goes to show you that I was actually making a lot of bad plays here, honestly. Anyways, here he's going to switch out into um, Vaporeon now. I go for the Trick Room. On the off chance, I want to like start dishing out damage on with um, Azumarill. 
However, I think here I switch into the Quagsire just because I want to see what I can actually um, do with Quagsire. I want to see if maybe I can land the Toxic on this Vaporeon. Just so it doesn't do anything funny, honestly. Because this thing can still wish, even though like it doesn't have Toxic like in previous games, it can still wish past into things. And because this thing's HP stat is so high, a lot of the mons that he has on his team can recover very, very well. So, yeah. I go for Toxic here because what I don't want is for this Vaporeon to be sticking around for too long. Put it on a timer, that way I can actually um, cripple it at some point. And if, it, and if it comes down to only Quagsire and Vaporeon, I can actually win out in the end. He ends up switching into Azelf, however, because he went for Wish earlier. And that pretty much undoes all the damage that Crobat got on it with the U-turn earlier. So that kind of sucks. Here, I have to wonder if um, I can actually send in the uh, Magna Zone. And I believe he goes for the Energy Ball here. Yeah, he does. And I think I try to go for the Magnet Rise here, actually. Because I think I was anticipating the Guard Jump to come in here. I'm not, I'm not really sure though. Oh yeah, I do. Okay, so yeah, I do go for the Magnet Rise here. Because seeing how I went for Thunderbolt the first time, and he went into Garchomp because of it, I felt like going for Thunderbolt here was actually a bad idea. However, I guess here, because I was way too laser focused on Garchomp, it didn't actually occur to me that he would probably U-turn into the, the Raikou instead. Because that's exactly what he does. And once again, here he's taking a long time to think about his move, which, again, it's not a big deal, just because, um, you know, they kind of have to think about these plays, obviously. Because I understand not wanting to make a, a misplay, honestly, just because we have to rush this match, obviously. But yeah, anyway, so he does send out the Raikou, so I go for the Magnet Rise, and I'll be honest with you, I kind of felt like this was pointless. I feel like in retrospect, I should have probably just gone for the Try Attack if I actually do predict the the Raikou could have gotten some damage prior right here and then from there I could have just gone for another tri attack and if he switched in Garchomp for some reason could have gotten damage on that as well honestly but the problem is that once Garchomp comes in it just basically um gets the earthquake for free because I don't have Crobat anymore maybe that's why I, I desperately went for the magnet rice here because I just felt like I was gonna need it what this dude does is just stay in and go for shadow balls though I guess he wants to get the spadef drop and just put me like in a, in a situation where I'd have to go for um, Magnet Rise again, I guess. Or probably in a situation where he can just take me out easily with any mon. He goes for Shadow Ball again and actually does end up getting the spadef drop here. So that's actually kind of bad for me, obviously. I am getting damage when this try attack, but not enough, honestly. In fact, this is actually like a 4-hit KO. Which isn't good for me, obviously. That just makes things a lot worse for me. Because that means I'm not going to be able to take this thing out anytime soon. And this will probably give him the option to actually switch out, actually. Here... Hmm. I forgot what I did here, actually. Okay, I keep going for try attacks I don't know if he switches out here yet, honestly. He might not, actually. Or he might, but I don't know into what, though. He does switch it out, okay. But into what? Okay, the Azelf, okay. And then here, I go for the tri attack again, yeah. And here, hmm. I don't remember what I go for here. Huh. I go into Magnet Rise again. I think this was a misplay actually, because I still have a turn of Magnet Rise left. That might have been a misplay actually. I think I was trying to go for a Tri Attack again in case the Raikou came back. But I freaking went down to freaking Magnet Rise. Holy shit, that's that's so bad actually. Holy fuck. And what does he go for? It's gotta be the Raikou, no? No, actually, no, it can't be the Raikou. Yeah, it had to be the Garchomp. Yeah, because the Raikou already took damage, and I don't think he wants to switch it back in just to take more damage. Yeah, it would be that thing. Okay, and Garchomp, yeah. Because Garchomp came in and my electromagnetism wore off. Now I'm put in a situation where I have to choose whether I want 
to um, whether I want Quagsire to die or Magnuson to go down. And I think ultimately I end up deciding that Magnuson should go down because Quagsire still beats Vaporeon. Magnuson does too, but not, it doesn't take Garchomp very well. So obviously I have to just let it go down. Like, I don't know, in retrospect, yeah, no, yeah, I think, because Magnezone, yeah, I can Thunderbolt Vaporeon, but it doesn't one-shot it, unfortunately, and in return, that thing can Scald and for some reason do a lot of damage nonetheless. And I think that's what I wanted to avoid, honestly. Now here, obviously, I just send in Slow King, go for Trick Room, because if this thing tries to go for Earthquake again, obviously I have to be prepared, because if I go for Ice Beam and this thing lives it for some reason, um, it'll just double Earthquake me and take me out, and I won't get Trick Room, and then anything that outspeeds me will just dish out a lot of damage and possibly take out the entirety of my team, and that's kind of not what I want. It's gonna switch out again, though, and go back into Vaporeon, which, by the way, has been quite a pest, honestly, in this match. Always w coming in to take hits and wish pass into anything that's taken damage so far, and basically undoing all the damage that I do with my mons, and my mons in the process are just going down, which is obnoxious to say the least but yeah I, okay so here I went for the trick room and then because of the switch into Vaporeon again and since Vaporeon is still going on with these wishing shenanigans I decided to just immediately go for the belly drum regardless of the consequences here and I believe he ends up switching out I think rather than going for the scald which kind of was what I was expecting I was expecting him to go for scald first then I go for Belly Drum and then I could strike it, but no, he ends up switching into the Raikou for some reason. Which is odd because again, I had the Trick Room up. Maybe he was expecting me to be Choice Bandit and was expecting me to go for the Play Rough and was expecting me to take it out in one hit. So he decided to sack Raikou instead. I think when he saw the Belly Drum though, is when he decides to bring back the Vaporeon and you're going to see why right now. And I'll be honest with you, it's the one thing that really had me all sorts of frustrated but yeah i'm gonna take out this raikou sure however this vaporeon is going to come back when i first saw this i was thinking ah that's not a big deal what's the worst this thing can do but boy did i see what he had in mind honestly it wasn't good obviously because look the trick room is still up obviously so i could just play rough this thing and take it out However, he does have one trick up its sleeve, and that is the Protect, which, yeah, it gives me leftovers, so I can recover well with the, um, the Azumarill, which is pretty good, honestly. However, what I didn't take into consideration was that, yeah, the Trick Room is gone, and that was why he went for the Protect, but aside from that, he actually has the freaking Haze. Which, I'll be honest with you, I don't even think I even knew this thing could get. Probably because I've never seen it on Vaporeon before. And probably because I didn't do enough research when team building for this guy. But, yeah. I didn't see this coming and... Kind of makes me wonder why he didn't go for it um, as soon as I sent it in. But probably because he didn't know if I was banded or not. I think once he saw it is when he decided to bring it back, obviously. So, damn. I'll admit that here, he kind of had me played, but I think this could have been avoided if I actually did a little bit of research, you know? Ultimately, that's not what I did, so yeah, that kind of sucks, honestly. And to make matters worse, I stay in for some reason, probably out of bitterness because of that haze, because I was actually angry when this haze happened, because I wanted to destroy this guy's team for constantly getting this Vaporeon in just to wish past everything. And I get hazed instead. So I just wanted to like attack this Vaporeon so badly. And because of it, I stay in. And this guy goes for Scald. And he gets the burn. And now this Azumarill is basically useless. Because he can't do anything now. Which is terrible. So, yeah. I probably should have switched in Sloking. Or even Quagsire, honestly. I really don't get why I didn't switch in Quagsire the minute that haze came out. I guess I was afraid he'd double or something. I don't know. But... I should not have stayed in with a zoom roll there. Maybe it could have done something. I still had Sloking. I still could have had Trick Room. I could have still dished out damage to whatever he had on his team that wasn't Vaporeon. 
And if he tried to threaten the Scald again, I could just switch into Quagsire and just toxic the entirety of his team. I don't know why I didn't think of um, just switching out, honestly. But I did, and now I'm in a tight situation. Not looking too good for me, obviously. Once again, which is terrible. So Azelf comes in. I try to go for the Toxic again, because I think the last time I went for it, it, it just missed. So, yeah, because my luck is still pretty bad in most cases. In fact, it's so bad that I got that burn as well from the Scald. Although that could have been avoided if I just switched out, honestly. There was an easy switch in Quagsire there, and I just didn't go for it for some reason. So that was kind of on me as well. So, yeah, okay, so this Azelf is now Toxic, which is good. But I don't think I stay in here, actually. I think I switch out. I think I go into Sloking, probably expecting the U-turn. But I, I also remember that he actually did have the Energy Ball, so if he goes for Energy Ball, probably it's the best thing I have on my team that can take it. I was hoping that it'd be at the very least a 3-hit KO. Unfortunately, that's not the case. This is a 2-hit KO. And it's not even Life Orb, which is kind of crazy, honestly. It's just the super effectiveness that... I think the Slow King was also offensively invested as well, just to be able to take out all kinds of things while in Trick Room. So maybe that's why I wasn't able to take the the um, the Energy Ball very well. But here I switch out Quagsire, and I honestly couldn't tell you if this was a bad play or not. Probably, yeah, probably not. Or actually, probably. Yeah, probably. I think this would not have been a big deal, actually. If I actually... No, no, wait. It's because... Yeah, no, there was nothing I can do, actually. Because I was wondering if if the Azumarill wasn't burned, maybe I could have done something, but no. Here, I was just left in an encrucijada. I just couldn't do anything, actually. Like, holy damn. Yeah, I couldn't do anything. No matter what, I was going to lose a Mon. Here, I decided to just um, go for the... Um, I think the, the Scald? Yeah, the Scald. I was considering for a bit to whether or not to go for Trick Room to see if I can maybe have a chance to Reverse Sweep, but I realized that I can only take maybe a couple Mons, including the Sage Elf. But from there, I was still going to get walled out from the, by the um, by the Vaporeon. And in that situation where I had Azumarill, Slow King, and Quagsire, because that as um, that Aze Elf had Energy Ball, one of my Mons were bound to go down regardless so basically i knew i lost at that point but i was trying to see if there was a way i could have maybe like brought it back but after that revelation or that realization i wanted to say not revelation after that realization i actually lost all hope so yeah the match went the time by the way because yeah the guy was also like spending a lot of time thinking too hard about his place and yeah i did win him the game honestly like even if we had time he was still gonna win anyways because he was gonna wall me out with the porion so yeah that's what happens sometimes. This match, I'll be honest with you, not the happiest about, honestly. Because there was too many misplays. One of my mons was misprepared because, yeah, the Weavile with Ice Beam, like, what the fuck, man? How on earth did I get Ice Beam on that and not Ice Punch? Seriously. On top of that, I was making a lot of misplays, leaving in mons when I shouldn't have. I could have preserved them for them to do work later. And um, on top of that, the RNG was still pretty savage, honestly. It's been savage for me, like, throughout this entire season. So, like, the fact that it's still kicking in even when I'm losing is kind of annoying, actually. But, yeah, there you go. Anyways, that's going to be the whole match for today. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you guys for the Week 7 match. And for now, just take it easy and have yourselves a good one.